Hi, I'm Clem. I'm Devante. And I'm Ethan. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the transcript. transcript. This week we'll be reporting on... The 2016 election results. Dropping in at the Northampton Skate Park. Interviewing a solo guitarist at the high school. And taking a look back at Barack Obama's presidency as his time in office winds to a close. Now, everybody is sad when their side loses an election. But the day after, we have to remember that we're actually all on one team. This is an intramural scrimmage. We're not Democrats first, we're not Republicans first. We are Americans first. Hi, I'm Nell Sanders, and this is Tell It Like It Is, where all things controversial are covered. The biggest headlines in our country and potentially around the world occurred on Tuesday last week, when Republican candidate Donald Trump was voted the 45th President of the United States, beating Hillary Clinton. I pledge to every citizen of our land that I will be President for all Americans. For those who have chosen not to support me in the past, of which there were a few people, I'm reaching out to you for your guidance and your help so that we can work together and unify our great country. Republicans are now in control of the presidency, the Senate, and the House. America proved Tuesday that drastic change is wanted and needed. However, not everyone was celebrating Trump's victory Wednesday morning. Major protests have popped up across the country in cities, college campuses, and certain towns, including a local protest in Springfield, Massachusetts this past weekend. One of the biggest concerns of the election results is the increase in hate crimes towards minorities, Muslims, and the queer community, inspired by Trump's rhetoric during his campaign. However, since Tuesday, many of his harshest and most controversial policies have either been removed from his website or modified. Trump is faced with the difficult task of uniting our divided country. I interviewed students and teachers on their opinion of the election results. Trump has won, and he has the House and the Senate, so... Let's just say the last time that happened, the Great Depression happened, so things could be quite bad. There's been a lot of uh, policies and certain things he's, you know, said and that he's really just not been uh, I don't know, hard set on. As my family and I sat around and watched the Republican debates all the time, we often were like, hey, that was a good point that you brought up. Like, and we just assumed that he wasn't going to make it all the way. I thought, I thought America could have done better with picking candidates. I also think that being an independent gives you a great opportunity to really see both sides. Yeah. I don't think anything bad, severely bad, is going to happen. Um, the way our government is set up with our checks and balances, I don't think that it's necessary to dwell on this election because Regardless, we're going to get change within the next four years. I think that the polling data that certain groups did was accurate and the polling data that certain groups did was inaccurate. So with this election, it looks like the de voting demographics shifted and they misread, they misread a certain segment of the population in places that they assumed were blue that really weren't blue. I have a couple of friends that are pollsters and their data from the states that they thought would have gone blue that went red was incorrect and they said, you know, we talked to these voters who we think voted for Donald Trump. We thought they were Hillary Clinton voters and they think they just weren't truthful. That's with any survey method, you're, you're running a risk of error. As a liberal town, it is hard to accept the results of the election. But at the end of the day, America voted Trump as president, and we have to move forward. What we have to do is respectfully engage in dialogue with people who have different opinions. We have to strive to understand and continue to fight for our beliefs by fighting fairly without stooping to a lower level. Again, I'm Nell Sanders, and this was Tell It Like It Is. Hello, I'm Noah Chouinard. The person who really got me into skateboarding, along with Bam Margera and his group of rowdy friends on TV, who I was like, oh yeah, boys, doing boy stuff, was my cousin Christian, Christian Jarvis. Sponsored by Converse Shoes now. And I saw him do a perfect kickflip. And he's like, yo, check it out, I learned kickflips on a skateboard. And from then on, I, I got on a board myself and just, started popping around, messing around with it. For skate culture itself, it's way more supportive than I think people think. It's way more united. I think people view it as like a group of a, a bunch of punks getting together and 
getting drunk and you know destroying property <laughs> and the way that the public treats me is that I'm like a nuisance. I'm like a, a wild dog off the chain when I'm skateboarding by someone. If there's a baby involved and someone's like pushing them in a stroller, they gotta like cross the street and get away from me because everybody everybody thinks we're like destructive and wild and going to crash into everyone. Now it's really about getting over personal challenges and the respect of watching someone like, I'll go to the skate park and like somebody will be trying like a crazy trick that they've never done before and like everybody knows where like their skill levels are at and other people's skill levels are at so you'll see some dude like hucking himself down the stair set for some new trick that he wants to get down and just watching them go through that battle like there's nothing else you can do but respect that person and a lot of the skate culture is like getting people through that and just kind of like building each other up and feeling stronger after that I guess that's why like the punk aspect of skating came in because it's like it's such a confidence booster because everybody's like got your back constantly you just feel like you're you're sort of in a gang but it's it's all love and it's it's definitely not hate or destruction it's way more creation and just watching people create all right i'm levi so in the first of a series of interviews with various nhs musicians this week I sat down with Ian Fishman to talk about guitar and his various influences and where he hopes to take his career and how he got started. So, I started playing guitar when I was in ninth grade because I remember I went to a bonfire with some of my friends and there were, and there were girls there and I thought that if I knew how to play guitar <laughs> then I would be able to talk to the opposite gender. I started playing ukulele first because I was like, I don't know how to play guitar. And my father and my brother both played guitar and I didn't know how. And whenever they tried to teach me, I would get very frustrated and I would be very confused. Um, but once I started playing ukulele, like, you know, the little freshman that I was, I, uh, I, I, I eventually got good enough to be able to feel confident that I could handle six strings and not just four. Um, and that was definitely a transition. Once I was able to play mindlessly, to just sit down and put my concentration on something else and have the guitar in my hands and to be able to do something on it without having to focus on it, that was when I really started to progress. Well, first, know what you like. But second, you have to you, you have to go out and you have to experiment with what other people are doing. You have to see the way the other ways other people are making music, or draw inspiration from a type of music that has already happened already. Like the kind of guitar playing I do, like Sean Fahey and like this neo primitivism like guitar finger picking style, like is super interesting to me and I really like the way that they incorporate melody into it and so that's definitely been an influence on me and, and how I like to play the guitar. I'm going to do a capstone um, this year where I'm going to incorporate guitar playing and I'm going to also use like an old drum machine and a warped kid keyboard that I used when I was when I was like four years old that's half broken and doesn't play the right notes and yeah let's see where that goes. 